Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Muhammad Al Shif, your host of Elixir of Life, kicking off another inspiring and informative episode with our with our distinguished guest, aiming to explore new frontiers and bring you most up-to-date information related to health. Our episode tonight is very uh, special. We'll talk about Parkinson disease. Stay tuned for a special episode. Once again, welcome back to Elixir of Life. Our next segment will be the quote of the week. Please stay with us. Once again, welcome back to Luxor of Life. Our next segment will be medical news. Our topic will be Awareness Day for Oral and Dental Health. To watch more details about this report, stay with us. Uh, Dr. Adil Ghanem, I'm in uh, the dental department in King Fahd Medical City. Uh, Dr. Ghanem, what can you tell us about this special day for uh, teeth care? Well, uh, uh, we want to send a message to the people that uh, we want to uh, tell them how to take care more uh, about their teeth, the oral health, uh, how to maintain their teeth, uh, having uh, preventive measures better than uh, treating uh, uh, a disease that already established. So we, we want to start early so it will be easier for the patient and for the dentist also. Interesting. Doctor, uh, let me ask you, does brushing daily uh, prevent such a diseases? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's really important to start brushing uh, twice a day, at least once when you wake up and once before you sleep. Uh, it's really important uh, because uh, uh, most of the bacterial uh, content in the mouth increases uh, while we're sleeping because of the saliva content. It's low, we have lower saliva while we're sleeping, so uh, we need to brush at least before we sleep for sure. And flossing for sure at least once a day and uh, mouthwash, rinse twice a day too. Interesting. So, Doctor, any uh, advice or message you want to deliver? Uh, you need to contact a dentist, you need to have uh, a dental home, you need to be always in a dental clinic at least once every six months if, if everything is sta stabilized. Uh, uh, you don't want to um, have a sporadic uh, treatment like every whenever you have pain that's that's wrong. Uh, you need to maintain your teeth so try to find a dentist and sit with him and he'll explain everything to you. Thank you so much. Okay, you. thank you. My name is Ahmed Al Ziyoud. I am the head of the dental lab in King Fahd Medical City. Uh, here we are offering all type of procedure in the dental lab. We have the fixed procedure, all the type, the implant and the normal fixed procedure. And we have removal of procedure, chrome cobalt, acrylic. Uh, we are offering uh, the orthodontic appliance, all the, the type of uh, orthodontic appliance, including the habit breaker, breakers and all type of uh, retainers. Uh, we are offering in the dental lab also the CAT CAM procedure, the fixed procedure. And one of the, uh, the very important uh, thing we are offering in the dental lab is the maxillofacial prosthetic. This is the offering the, uh, for the cancer patient and the oncology patient, all type of, uh, of uh, procedure, including the obturators, 
and the artificial eye, artificial nose, artificial ears. Thank you very much. The last thing, Allah, we, inshallah, we are here to help the patient and we are offering an old type of a procedure and uh, may Allah help all the patient and all the people here in the Saudi Arabia. Once again, welcome back to Lecture of Life. Our next segment will be talking about health, myth, and fact. To watch more details about this report, stay with us. Once again, welcome back to Lecture of Life. Now, now we are coming to the most, most important segment of our program, our episode theme, uh, and our topic of the week. We'll be talking about Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a chronic progressive neurodegenerative disorder with the primary motor symptoms to know more details about its clinical uh, presentation, about epidemiology, diagnosis and treatment, and state-of-art uh, therapy. It's my pleasure and honor to present my distinguished guest, starting by Dr. Amal. Dr. Amal Dakhil is a movement disorder specialist and assistant professor at Faisal University, director movement disorder program at King Faisal Specialist Hospital. Thank Welcome, you. Dr. Amal. Thank you. It's also my honor and pleasure to welcome my second esteemed uh, guest, Dr. Thamer Khairallah. He is a consultant neurologist and movement disorder specialist, assistant professor of Al Faisal University, uh, King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, without further ado, we'll start uh, our uh, intense uh, scientific uh, discussion, starting by what's uh, Parkinson's disease? If you could start, Dr. Thamer. Parkinson disease is the second uh, most common uh, neurodegenerative disease after Alzheimer's disease. Uh, it is famous for some of the symptoms of uh, tremor and uh, slowing of uh, movement, plus a number of other uh, motor, uh, psychiatric um, um, symptoms um, that progress over uh, time. Mm -hmm. Uh, could you demonstrate for us which area of the brain affected? Hmm. Uh, the area that is mostly affected is what is called the um, basal ganglia. Uh, and of course, this is the surface, is one. Can you just uh, talk about the anatomy of the brain in general? Okay. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. So, um, so this is the cortex of the brain. Um, this is the front, and this is where the eyes should be, and this is the back. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the brain stem, which is responsible for the Can you see a little bit to this vital. Side? Um, this is the uh, vitality centers, and over here is a number of uh, uh, other uh, neurons and uh, cells and centers called the uh, basal ganglia. So we have one layer of gray matter and another layer of gray matter. This deep layer of gray matter, diseases in this area causes uh, movement uh, disorders in general, and in particular, uh, Parkinson's disease as well. Excellent. 
Thank you, Dr. Thamer. Now we are coming to the second uh, question, uh, Dr. Amal. What are the risk factors and causes of uh, Parkinson's disease? So in a simple way, or a simple uh, and more scientific, the cause of Parkinson's disease is the deficiency of a chemical substance that is called dopamine. Uh, what, uh, there are multiple uh, risk factors. The most common is the age. We know that com Parkinson's disease is more common in patients who are older um, than 60 years old. Um, other other uh, risk factors can be the genetic factors and environmental. Uh, over the years, there have been many studies that focused on environmental factors, pesticide exposure, uh, some chemicals, um, also, um, the repetitive uh, head trauma has been tested mm -hmm. with uh, uh, inconsistent uh, uh, conclusion. However, it, we can consider it a risk factor to develop uh, Parkinson's disease. So, uh, repetitive head trauma from sports or from uh, motor the vehicle accident? So, the most common is the chronic repetitive uh, head trauma. We see it more on people with sport like boxing, for example or um, it is not only one uh, head trauma? Um, for most patients, though, with Parkinson's disease, the um, specific cause is not known. We, Unknown. Mm -hmm. we don't find mm -hmm. uh, any um, of these factors in most of the patients. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the best that the uh, evidence has to... Except maybe in the future we will elucidate the exact cause of Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. So always we do correlate boxing and, you know, uh, Parkinson's disease. There is a famous example, if you could uh, talk so about So one it. of the famous example is uh, Muhammad Ali Klai, who is a very famous uh, he's, uh, boxer. boxer and uh, was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. However, we know that there is an, a specific entity with symptoms that looks like, looked like Parkinson's uh, disease, but it is not Parkinson's. So in general, you cannot, so this is a very common question that patient will come and ask you, I do the sport, shall I stop? And we don't, we won't recommend people to stop from mm -hmm. doing any sport or uh, a professional uh, uh, boxers that they, they need to start to develop Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. So this is an important message we have to do. The other important, the other important thing in the causes, it is an abnormal protein called alpha-synuclein, a deposition of abnormal protein in the cells or the neurons, which are the brain cells, that will cause deficiency of dopamine, and therefore the motor symptoms will mm -hmm. um, be present. Excellent, uh, Dr. Amal. Uh, is there any uh, cubations more uh, associated with Parkinson's disease? Uh, epidemiological studies demonstrated that, uh, for example, um, wielding um, exposure to certain industrial level uh, fumes, uh, heavy metals, drinking certain uh, heavy water wells can be associated with higher incidence of Parkinson's disease, but uh, a direct causality is still uh, elusive. Mm -hmm. And is it a familial disease uh, or it's a sporadic disease? Mm. The majority of um, cases are sporadic. However, there is a genes, well-known genes, that is autosomal dominant or autosomal uh, recessive, um, um, which, uh, which is known and uh, however the treatment for both the genetic or sporadic um, uh, causes or patients are uh, uh, the same. The same, excellent. Mm -hmm. And talking about the epidemiology of the disease, uh, I think it's important. What's the typical age of insert the disease? So we know that patient present at this age will favor more Parkinson's disease? Hmm. Parkinson's disease can be found in patients in their, uh, as young as their teens, but this is unusual. Hmm. The usual age is middle age, um, late 40s, 50s, and the older the person gets, uh, the higher the chance that uh, Parkinson's disease um, uh, can happen. So it's a disease the, which get more uh, common in older age uh, populations rather than younger. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And, uh, also with the uh, expected increased aging um, in the population, um, a study showed that in um, 
2030, there will be a 50% increase in the incidence of Parkinson's disease. And we know that as the, in general, the ages in the population um, is increased. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. Uh, is, is there any gender, you know, specific differences more common in male or female, or there is no difference? I would like. So in f male to female, there is a slight increase in male than uh, female with a rate of three to two, and uh, this has been shown. Uh, this is the most updated uh, epidemi um, epidemiological mm. studies. Very interesting. And uh, how uh, common is the disease? Is it exceeding rare disease or it's uh, rare disease or common? It's, 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 uh, it's definitely not exceedingly rare. Uh, it's not common. It's not diabetes, for example. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, you can see it a lot in uh, public places. You can uh, start enumerating the number of uh, famous um, uh, persons who have encountered the disease, uh, actors, uh, prominent, um, the Pope, for example, the Pope previous to this Pope, I think, or the one before him, um, many politicians. Um, so it is not rare. It's not rare. Do you have any local, you know, data or registry that tell us the magnitude of the problem? Until now, we don't have anything in the in Saudi Arabia that will tell us the epidemiology or the incidence. That's true. Uh, however, also we have data from multiple parts of the world, uh, from the Far East to the to the States to North, South, and uh, the numbers are more or less uh, similar in most uh, societies. And mm -hmm. there is no. Uh, reason to make us think that we are much more or much less than mm -hmm. the average that is internationally. So we are more or less? Uh, would probably be similar. Similar. Uh, do you take it as an initiative to collect, you know, data? Because if we collect our data, we might have, you know, uh, distinct, you know, risk factors or, uh, I mean, prognosis, prognostic factors. Do you think that make difference or? I mean, it's possible, of course, if uh, this was started, uh, that you will find it. But even with um, um, uh, um, uh, research entities with uh, much more uh, resources, longer time, and exposure to more patients, and uh, nothing of that sort, mm -hmm. unfortunately, was found. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, Dr. Ram, what are the you know uh, symptoms of Parkinson's disease that let's say public, they can recognize, you know, the disease, or let's say general physicians, if they encounter a patient who have uh, symptoms that suggest Parkinson's disease. Hmm. So there are general symptoms that we, um, the people will can, uh, the patient themselves, they can notice, or a physician. Um, but the, however, there is a criteria where we can diagnose patients with Parkinson's disease tremors, which are shaking. You can f find shaking on the hands and the lips, the jaw, the leg. Uh, usually when the patient or the person is sitting, relaxing, the, the arm or the hand or the foot starts to shake. Slowness in general, um, whether it is a slow walking or a slowness in doing uh, the um, daily activities and hand dexterities. Some uh, patients will have uh, balance uh, difficult or Im um, imbalance or the balance difficulties. The symptoms can progress over time, including um, other uh, psychiatric or cognitive um, uh, symptoms, but this we can see it over years. But in general, uh, we will think about tremors, slowness, stiffness in the arms or the legs, slow walking. Patients, you will have, you'll notice that they have a mask face uh, or have or reduced expression. Um, the physician may notice reduced blinking that we usually look for in, di in diagnosing of patients Parkinson's disease. So those are major, the major motor symptoms, and there are other non-motor symptoms which are also important as the disease progresses. And sometimes those non-motor symptoms can <coughs> present years before uh, th these patients or those patients start uh, presenting with their tremors or slowness, mm -hmm. such as constipation, depression, um, sleep difficulties, 
reduced uh, sense of smell. So th those simple s symptoms can precede also the motor symptoms. Non-motor symptoms, okay, and motor big. Correct. Know, so if we can ca categorize them in motor and non-motor symptoms. Um, thank you, Dr. Amal. Dr. Thamar, what's the typical, you know, tremor of uh, Parkinson disease? Because tremor or shakiness of the hand is could be caused by many, you know, uh, causes like anxiety, drugs, hyper, increased thyroid uh, hormone. Most other tremors are uh, action tremor, uh, meaning that they occur when the hand is in use. Can you uh, so when the hand is reaching for an object, then you can have tremor. And when you're holding the object, you have tremor. This is most other tremor. Mm -hmm. Parkinson disease tremor is the opposite. Excellent. Patient would have tremor while at rest, typically while watching TV, for example, the hand will start shaking. Usually mm -hmm. the hand would be in the lab. Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, while walking and the hand is sitting idle by the side, uh, the hand will start to mm -hmm. display tremor. Once the patient starts using the hand, for example, holding his mobile or using his rosary or um, mm -hmm. holding a cup, the tremor will be reduced substantially or uh, in some patients completely disappear. So rest tremor or tremor at rest or resting tremor is the one that is most suggestive and most associated with Parkinson's disease. Um, other causes of tremor usually produce action tremor rather than resting tremor. Like familial tremor, okay. Essential tremor, for example, which is familiar, is usually action tremor rather than resting tremor. Throughout the action. Of course, there are always exceptions and sure. rarities, but uh, commonly speaking, this is the rule. Why I focus about this, you know, symptom? Because this is a very common symptom. We don't want to send wrong message to the public. Anybody having tremor, you will suspect to have uh, Parkinson's oh, yeah, disease. You're right. Parkinson's disease tremor is uh, very characteristic. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it even has its own Rosary shape. Type. But this is too much mm -hmm. details. Yes, it will be like uh, mm -hmm. rolling kind of uh, tremor Rosary, like okay. that, rather than the mm -hmm. tremors of, uh, of other people. Maybe this is the reason why many patients they will shy off from presenting to a physician. Uh, because this resting tremor doesn't interfere, in e especially initially, with their daily mm. activities. So it does not interfere with their eating, drinking. As they, as soon as they move their hands, it will disappear. Um, and until later when it starts to progress mm -hmm. or other symptoms start to show like uh, slowness or stiffness. And again, uh, back to the gait, is there any uh, peculiar or specific gait? You can say Parkinson's disease. This is suggestive Parkinson disease. Mm. So the gait and the posture, you find patients uh, more uh, with a stooped posture, like leaning forwards, and they're, once they start um, walking, they will have more uh, short steps, and we call it, uh, they can drag one side of one foot or one side. Um, we call this shuffling gait. They also find them, we can uh, note a uh, close observation of them turning will be uh, slow and not smooth, reduce arm swing. In general, normal people, when we walk, we have an equal uh, arm swing. We find in patients with Parkinson's disease, the arm swing will be reduced on one side and the other side. Mm -hmm. Excellent, uh, Dr. Amal. What are the, Dr. Uh, Tham, what are the mental status changes or cognitive, uh, you know, uh, disturbance in Parkinson's disease? About a third of patients with Parkinson's disease can be susceptible to uh, memory loss and even uh, dementia, uh, which is unlike the dementia of Alzheimer's disease, very um, responsive to uh, treatments uh, specific for the uh, memory. Patients also with Parkinson's disease, even early on, of course the memory problem uh, usually happens later in the disease, towards the end of the disease, not at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, How many years, you know? Uh, it's variable. Variable. Huh? There is this point of disease variability with Parkinson's disease. Not, uh, not that, you know, um, uh, it's very variable. Some patients might have uh, predominantly tremor. 
Some others might have um, predominantly stiffness and slowness. Some patients would start um, having their gait problems after seven years. Mm -hmm. Some would continue with the disease for 30 years without problems with gait and without falling. Mm -hmm. Some patients will continue their whole life with uh, the most perfect memory and cognition. Mm -hmm. And some patients within like a number of years, they will start to have uh, um, slowness in their thinking, uh, memory lapses, frank dementia. Also some uh, personality uh, changes. Um, they can have some uh, hallucinations, um, sleep uh, problems. Um, uh, so yes, uh, the, the, the clinical picture of Parkinson's disease can be uh, variable. variable. Uh, widely variable and so some of the patients would come to the clinic and say doctor but uh, I read in the internet that I should have uh, falls and I should have uh, bladder problems and I should have memory issues and I don't have memory issues but that means I'm not Parkinson's disease but that's not the case mm -hmm. how do you respond to such you know uh, patient I'll just explain that the uh, picture it's like a big canvas and uh, not even two patients are exactly the same. You can yeah. have variability. That's why medicine is not straightforward or difficult. We have variability, you know, of clinical picture. Uh, Dr. Amal, uh, just talking about the uh, typical uh, symptom, symptoms of Parkinson's disease, is there an uh, entity called atypical Parkinson's disease or typical Parkinson's disease or there are types of Parkinson's disease? Hmm. I think this is, this is a very important question and maybe just take one step back and, and say how do we diagnose Parkinson's disease we heavily rely on our clinical examination. So seeing a neurologist uh, or a, a specialist in the movement disorders who can examine and tell you you have signs of Parkinsonism or Parkinson disease and then follow the patients um, onwards. Um, because there are atypical Parkinson and they, those are patients, I always explain it to my patients that they look like Parkinson disease but they are not Parkinson's mm -hmm. disease. Um, they usually have some ad changes in their brain or uh, that can be seen in the um, MRI and uh, the imaging of, or neuroimaging. Mm -hmm. um, so those, those cat or this category of atypical Parkinsonism, are we treat them different, they respond in a different way, they progress also differently. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, there is atypical Parkinsonism and and, the, and one of the um, challenges is you have to follow patients, uh, you have to uh, trust your neurologist who knows what he's doing and he knows how to approach uh, you clinically. There is some def definitely with the increased knowledge and um, we have a, a very specialized imaging, neuroimaging, which is nuclear scan that can test uh, the dopamine deposition or deficiency in the brain and this can help us also further diagnose or confirm the diagnose. But this, but again, the majority of the diagnosis or he, the diagnosis is heavily on the clinical examination. Because those patients of atypical Parkinson's, their examination, their will show, or they show different uh, uh, signs or uh, in their examination or their history will be different or atypical. Uh, so, Dr. Uh, Thamr, so as stated by Dr. Rahman, so the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease relies heavily on the clinical presentation, plus, you know, other, you know, diagnostic modalities. Could you elaborate more on this? Okay. Mm. Uh, yes, for example, uh, patients with Parkinsonism whom are not having a hepatic Parkinson's disease, one of the categories is vascular Parkinsonism, mm -hmm. which is secondary to uh, small strokes that happen. Uh, can I use the Sure, uh, of course. So um, uh, exactly in this uh, area uh, of the brain, uh, which is the white matter between the cortex and the basal ganglia, some patients might have small, tiny, tiny strokes. Mm -hmm. uh, usually happen more with hypertension. And when they accumulate in good number, they will result in a picture of slowness, uh, stiffness, 
not much tremor, mm -hmm. but often this is confused with uh, idiopathic Parkinson disease. Mm -hmm. So by examination, as the uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Amal uh, has explained, uh, you can make the differentiation also by MRI. The MRI of the, uh, of the brain of an idiopathic Parkinson disease patient usually especially at the beginning, doesn't show much. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a patient with uh, vascular Parkinsonism, you will see the leucoriosis uh, 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 picture, the big white patch of accumulative small mm -hmm. strokes. Most of the patients will tell, but I've never had a stroke before, because usually most of them are small, tiny, subclinical sure. uh, strokes. So but that's the mimicker, mimicker that's, of Parkinson's? That's one of the mimickers. Mm. Other more rare uh, entities are other neurodegenerative uh, diseases, like, for example, uh, multiple system atrophy and mm -hmm. uh, progressive supranuclear palsy and uh, so many other uh, diseases, but these are exceedingly rare. I mean, for 100 idiopathic Parkinson's disease patients, maybe you will find five out of the other rare neurodegenerative Thank diseases. Thank you, uh, Dr. Thamar. We'll come back to diagnostic uh, modalities, but now we'll go for a brief report about uh, Parkinson's Disease Awareness Day. To watch more details about this report, stay with us. Dr. Qasim Al Qasawi, the CEO of King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. Uh, doctor, uh, today you have a gathering, an important gathering about a disease called Parkinson disease. Uh, could you tell us about the goals and what is going to benefit the community of Saudi Arabia? Well, uh, today I am very pleased with my colleague in King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center in participating in the second annual meeting of the Saudi Parkinson Society. Uh, this meeting is arranged between the society and uh, the hospital. And uh, the aim of the meeting is really to educate the society about the disease itself. And uh, how could we prevent it? How could we treat the patient? How is it diagnosed? And most important is an education for the family, how to sort of uh, manage the patients or a relative of the family who is suffering from Parkinson's disease, whether in his speech or in his uh, uh, eating habits, walking, speeching and drinking, and also uh, getting the people together. And really, I'm very pleased to see this social responsibility activity, which we are very proud in King Faisal to participate in it with the Saudi Parkinson Society. And really, I'd like to thank the board of the society, headed by Dr. Suleiman Blali, and the rest of the members, and also all the members of the society, because really, it shows how serious they are in educating the patient, as well as their families, how to manage patients with Parkinson's disease. Uh, with me now, uh, Dr. Dalal Ghout. Uh, today is the Parkinson's Awareness Day. It's the second gathering uh, with, uh, conducted by uh, the Saudi uh, Parkinson uh, Association or Sa Saudi uh, Parkinson Society. Society. Uh, it is, uh, the goal is to uh, spread the awareness about this disease uh, through the people and whoever have the disease so that they would know uh, all the uh, symptoms, what kind of um, uh, treatments they can have and uh, they can know about. Uh, what about, uh, doctor, the, uh, the most important subject that uh, has been discussed or is going to be discussed in today's event? Today's event will be discussed uh, several subjects, but this year we are putting the light, the spotlight on the physical therapy and the uh, importance of physical therapy with Parkinson's disease. Uh, we will be discussing about uh, Parkinson's disease and physical therapy, Parkinson's disease and the uh, uh, speech therapy, uh, dietitian, um, uh, pharmacy, uh, medical uh, um, uh, treatment. All these will be discussed in uh, today's Awareness Day. I'm 
Hawazin El Jahani. I'm a speech and language pathologist. I work in King Faisal Specialist Hospital. Um, today is to, uh, to increase the awareness about the Parkinson's disease, to super support uh, patients who have Parkinson's in Saudi Arabia so they can know where to go and if they need help, and also to increase the awareness for the people so they know how can they deal with people with uh, Parkinson's. Uh, and what is going uh, to benefit the community of Saudi Arabia? Uh, of course, increasing the awareness uh, so people be aware of this disease. They know how to uh, help or uh, deal with people who have Parkinson's. And for the patients, so they know where to go. Uh, they understand what kind of treatment they have, what kind of services they have. Um, so they understand the disease and um, what things they can do to help them uh, improve and develop. Uh, and what about the disease? I think it's uh, rare or... Uh uh, it's uh, known for some Saudis and some Saudis, Saudis doesn't know this kind of disease. Could you tell us about this disease, please? Um, it's a uh, it's, uh, degenerative disease um, that affects the central nerve system and it causes the decrease of the dopamine. So the patient um, have a motor problem usually. Um, uh, they get changes in their motor structure, so either they get uh, very rigid um, or they get, um, they can uh, walk slowly or walk very quickly. It affects the motor in general. The presentation of the person with Parkinson's um, is unique, different in terms of movement. So it can affect speech, it affects swallowing, it affects wa walking. Any movement can, could be affected. Once again, welcome back to Lexer of Life. Uh, again, uh, to welcome our distinguished guests, Dr. Amal uh, Dakhil and Dr. Thamal Khairala. And our topic is very important, Parkinson's disease. Just uh, to continue uh, the discussion, we uh, posed on uh, diagnostic uh, modalities. You mentioned uh, MRI, one of the modalities. What's after that? Anything else? Uh, like the uh, Dr. Amal mentioned about the uh, specific PET scan with a tracer designed to uh, demonstrate the uh, dopamine uptake in the striatum. Mm -hmm. And in idiopathic Parkinson's disease patients, they have asymmetric and deficient uptake of uh, dopamine, and this can be demonstrated and um, uh, can differentiate some of the Parkinsonism patients. Uh, idiopathic versus um, um, others. Uh, certain rare diseases have specific clear pictures on MRI that can be highly um, diagnostic. Mm -hmm. um, but the main bulk of diagnosis is clinical. Mm -hmm. So it becomes the, the most important diagnostic tool is your um, expert uh, neurologist or a movement disorder neurologist who mm -hmm. would be able to tell you, A, you have Parkinsonism or not, and then B, what type of uh, Parkinsonism. Is there any lab investigations or blood test uh, that can, you know, indicate or raise flags? It's still lagging. A lot of research is going on because it's always um, important to make a definitive diagnosis in a way that is uh, uh, demonstrable and measurable. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, the disease happens many years before the first clinical manifestation and so for development of effective therapies you would need to catch these patients in their early uh, stages mm -hmm. and this is not possible since we can only diagnose clinically and so these uh, biomarkers is Excellent. the area of research there are uh, a number of biomarkers that have been uh, uh, demonstrated in the uh, blood, uh, skin, uh, looking for also alpha-synuclein in the uh, intestinal tract, but they are generally not as widely used. They are still at investigational level mm -hmm. at this point. It would be great if we would have yeah, a test, you need know, somebody who has a tremor, you run a test and you would know if You can predict, is. okay, that yes. the disease will evolve, you know, with time. Yes. That's very important and back to Dr. Amal, uh, now you are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. What you know aspects of life or uh, lifestyle you know modification to make your life better? Okay. 
Um, I think there are uh, there are few things or that we the patient can change in their day or lifestyle that can help um, in collaboration with the medication. And I think the report that you just uh, showed uh, highlights this, and I think okay, this is good. one of the importance of the awareness day. It is a treatment plan, and this is what we discuss with patients. It's not only medication, it's a treatment plan. So for the first thing, exercise. Patient will ask what type of exercise I should do. We just recommend an exercise that they are they enjoy doing it, they are very regular in doing it, whether it's uh, walking on a treadmill or outdoors, or is it a specific classes, or is it exercise with a, um, a physiotherapist. There are uh, specific or special uh, Parkinson disease physiotherapy program that they train patients um, to walk in a different way uh, or in a better way, um, improve the posture, um, so this will also facilitate uh, their uh, daily, uh, their life. Um, um, good sleep, night sleep is very important as studies show that uh, the sleep will enhance uh, the physiological dopamine in your brain. Um, a good sleep or uh, something called uh, um, a power nap during the day, so when you're tired during the day taking a nap will uh, help um, 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 in, your, uh, in the patient's function or person function. In, um, in the in nutrition, there is no specific uh, food that you have to avoid or you have to take, but it, you have to have a balanced, uh, healthy uh, diet. Um, maybe um, your neurologist will advise you to take your medication in, a, uh, in an empty stomach or avoid protein to improve your uh, response to um, uh, medication that can be uh, done. Also, if you have, for example, if you have a balanced uh, di diet, you will have, you're less likely to develop constipation. That will also av affect how is your medication working. Excellent and uh, stunning, Dr. Amal. So uh, this uh, uh, brings us to the importance of uh, multidisciplinary team. So is Parkinson's disease treated by individual physician like movement disorder physician or by uh, multiple, let's say, healthcare professionals? Definitely multiple. And each one of them has something unique that uh, can be offered. Um, Dr. Amal mentioned about the physical therapy, for example, especially for patients who have falls. Uh, there are certain uh, methods of training uh, with physical therapists that can reduce substantially the uh, chances of, of falls in these patients with Parkinson's disease. Patients with Parkinson's disease who have problems with speech, mm -hmm. uh, usually speech problems are not so much responsive to medical therapy uh, or surgery, but they can respond in a very uh, striking way to uh, specific uh, speech uh, therapy uh, mm -hmm. programs. Uh, Lisa Verbin te technique uh, uh, speech therapy and, and it can make them speak louder mm -hmm. and clearer, which is naturally an important um, uh, part of their life. The physician, of course, uh, role cannot be overstated. I mean, this is the person who will make the diagnosis, start the medical mm -hmm. therapy, orchestrate the uh, patient care among the uh, specialists. And for selected number of uh, a portion of patients with Parkinson's disease who get advanced enough, they can also benefit a lot from a uh, specialized neurosurgeon mm -hmm. who uh, with certain interventions can help some of the symptoms that you can find with uh, Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. So did I forget anybody? So. Cubational therapist, is there any role for a cubational therapist? For select patients, but uh, the main, I think, is the um, physical therapy, uh, physical speech. therapy, speech language pathology, uh, physician, surgeon, dietitians, uh, dietitians, um, yes. Maybe also some in, in some centers having a, a neuropsychologist or a psychiatrist yes. as uh, depression is very common in very uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, anxiety is common, so you need uh, someone on board uh, um, dealing either with medications or only uh, um, a neuropsychological evaluation for their cognitive or for their uh, psychological stat uh, status. Mm. Excellent. Uh, I think we covered the very important part, non-pharmacological uh, therapy. Now we are left with pharmacological therapy 
what they think patient is the most important. Uh, could you uh, enlighten us more about the drug therapy of Parkinson's disease? Sure. Oh. So a very old but still a very effective medication uh, over years is the precursor of uh, uh, dopamine, which is levodopa. Uh, levodopa can come in different uh, uh, forms. Um, it is effective in treating many of the symptoms, like the rigidity, uh, sometimes also the, the tremors. Um, there are other, um, so this is the major uh, treatment or the gold standard the treatment. However, there are other uh, medication that works on the receptors that can mimic um, uh, dopamine, what, but the receptors will anticipate it as dopamine and will react upon it. Um, uh, there is uh, some in, um, medication that will work on the enzymes at the level of the neurons, which are the cells of, on the, in the brain. Um, each of the decision or how to, uh, or to decide which treatment to start first depends has um, we have to consider several things what are the pre the symptoms age of patients what does he have other risk factors as it all each treatment category has its own risk uh, can you uh, give us one example of each you know uh, class you mentioned live doba you mentioned one that mainstay of therapy the other one so for uh, dopamine uh, agonist, uh, we have uh, Pramipixo that can come oral, it can uh, come uh, as uh, a patch. Uh, we have uh, uh, COMPT inhibitors, uh, and uh, um, this also can be uh, used um, uh, to prolong the effect of uh, levodopa. Uh, there is other category of medications that is anticholinergic. We use it with younger age of patients. Um, that helps with uh, significantly with uh, improving tremors. Um, other um, treatment like amantadine that can uh, help in the side effects of levodopa. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, levodopa is the most effective treatment. However, it comes with a package, and the package is the involuntary movements that the patient can develop. Can usually they are generalized. Um, in some extent, in, in many patients, it can be limiting. Um, the dosing of levodopa or can affect their daily activities. So uh, we treat this side effects with other medications or sometimes we have to adjust the doses of levodopa. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amal. Uh, Dr. Thamar, can uh, brain surgery cure Parkinson's disease briefly? Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> briefly, no. Mm. And there's no other cure for Parkinson's disease. What about deep brain stimulation? Uh, it's part of the surgery. It's an excellent uh, choice for symptomatic therapy of a select number of patients. Unfortunately, we cannot even use it for most patients uh, because of the surgery uh, limitations and its uh, adverse effects. It's a, an invasive intervention. And so we, it's limited to some of the patients and it's very useful for these number of patients to help with their symptoms. But the disease will continue to progress mm -hmm. despite the surgery. Also, the patient will continue to need to take his tablets uh, uh, as before surgery. So it will give, him the, give the patient better quality of life, mm -hmm. but it will not change the course of the disease, cure the disease, or stop the need for um, other diseases. Is it second line yeah, after uh, drug therapy, or could be used uh, as first line? It's always been used as a second line. Uh, there is always the debate about the time of using uh, the surgical intervention. And it has been earlier and earlier along uh, the way. Uh, there are still, um, uh, there was an ongoing uh, study about using it very early within the first, before five years of therapy. Yeah. But the standard is uh, as long as you're achieving good activities of daily living with medical therapy, then the surgical therapy would be left for later when the medical therapy is not capable of bringing this uh, benefit to the patient anymore. Uh, Dr. Thamer, what about uh, stem cell therapy? Does it work? It's experimental. Experimental, point. so that's very important. There's no proven uh, benefit of any sort to stem cell therapy. There were other uh, trials that were done to transplant uh, tissues uh, that will secrete dopamine in the brain taken from the adrenal medulla, that which is above the kidney. Uh, 
uh, or taken from uh, fetuses that died and uh, they were not successful in uh, helping patients. Uh, what's the take home message? Um, the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is not the end of life. It's usually a, a change of life. Mm -hmm. And um, like any change, you can make it for your better or for um, otherwise. And there are a lot of uh, important uh, uh, symptomatic therapies that can help the patient for uh, a good number of years uh, at the beginning uh, of the disease. And for some patients, they are of a benign nature of disease and they will live decades with not much of a major problem. So it doesn't require that much of gloominess. Mm -hmm. uh, but for some patients, they will need the collaborative effort of a whole team to take care of and give them the best outcome. Thank you, Dr. Thamer. What's the take-home message, Dr. Amal? I think it is important to uh, increase the awareness about Parkinson's disease, what they have. They need the support of the, um, uh, the community, um, family members, um, to recognize them, understand the, their differences. Again, um, the hope is very big in uh, Parkinson's disease with day and day researches how to prevent or early diagnose maybe or um, and this will I hope the future will bring us to the near future we can get uh, there. Thank you Dr. Amal. I think awareness indeed is the best uh, preventive method and uh, knowledge is the most powerful you know weapon against or fighting diseases. Thank you Dr. Amal. Uh, consultant uh, neurologist with special uh, sp uh, specialty movement disorder, Dr. Thamar Khairallah, movement disorder specialist. Uh, hopefully to see you again on our uh, program. Thank, thank you. you. Sure, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Sure, now we are coming to the next segment. We'll be talking about the uh, health uh, benefit of watermelons. To watch more details about this report, stay with us. Once again, welcome back to Elixir of Life. Uh, I hope uh, and I wish you, you enjoyed watching our episode and uh, found it informative. Uh, before uh, I conclude, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, would like to uh, thank our distinguished team uh, and uh, wish you a pleasant uh, week and looking uh, forward to seeing you uh, next week. Goodbye. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.